Childish Gambino, otherwise known as Donald Glover, is a rapper, singer, actor, comedian, director, writer. What hasn't this guy done? I think he's one of today's greatest multi-talented celebrities out there, so I thought it'd be fun to rank every single song he has, spanning all the way from his early camp days in 2011 to his most recent work, 31520, and everything in between. You know the drill, I'll be dividing the list up from what I believe to be bad songs, okay songs, good songs, great songs, and eventually perfect songs with their respective background color depicting that. Okay, now onto the list. Starting with Dead Last, we have... The Library, intro. This is legitimately a four second long track of absolutely nothing, what do you want me to say? The bad girls club. What did you Childish Gambino at the atrium. This one is legitimately just a commercial, like, who even listens to the radio anymore, man? Come on! Come on. 3005 beach picnic version. I don't see why the original 3005 doesn't make for a good beach picnic setting already, and the high pitch vocals on this one kind of hurts my head. <laughs> Playing around before the party starts. This is the one of many interludes on because of the internet, and although I do enjoy the nice piano chords being played, it's not an actual song. <laughs> Money baby. You know that earworm episode from SpongeBob? Uh, yeah. <laughs> zero zero zero. This song is also just a literal bag of nothing. This song is what still air feels like, just with a little bit of spice. I feel like I'm dying when I'm listening to this song. Like, this is what I'm hearing as my soul literally leaves my body. You don't have to call. This one is just spoken word from Childish Gambino, who really shows you how good his storytelling is. Too bad everything else about this song is midder than the equator. We can make things right. Late Night in Kauai. Another spoken word track, but this time from Mr. Political and Economic, Jaden Smith. Go DJ. I I mean I could have made this beat, but you didn't. Shut up. Go to the party at all. Thirty nine twenty eight. I really don't want to be a hater on this song because it definitely holds more sentimental value to Glover than anyone else. But sonically, it could have been so much more of a tribute to his father who'd recently passed than what we got here. What kind of love? Sure, I love his great singing voice, but the instrumental is so tame it feels like a drag to listen to. Dude, that's Buddha's got bottles on bottles on bottles of green oil. The party. If you guys didn't know, because the internet also came with a 70-page screenplay you're supposed to read while listening to the album, just to give more context to the story, its characters, and more. During this scene at the party, Gambino, who's playing the boy, is hosting a party in his huge mansion, gets into his own head, then kicks everybody out. I feel like there could have been so much more potential for this track to be better than it is. The whole thing is just boring noise. I mean, the rapping towards the end is kind of cool, but he could have switched it up, the, like switch up the beat, and then just start going ham on everyone. Just start rapping like crazy, kicking everyone out one by one furiously. I feel like that could have been cool. Be alone. Be alone. This is what a kindergartner sounds like on the first day of school. So many. Flight of the Navigator. I know, I know, I know. I don't like this song for the same reason I don't like What Kind of Love three placements ago, but... Oh, man. I know. A lot of you are not going to like this one. Love for the son of a commuter who Hold You Down. With the first camp song on this list, the only thing really keeping me from liking it even more is honestly just the chorus. It's the early stages of his singing like this that paved the way for songs like Redbone to really flourish later on. Like F's Given. I actually really like just the first part of the first verse, but after that, it's not good. Earn. It's really just the vocals on the back end that are what make the track. Also, a coincidence, Earn from Atlanta? My Shine. Some funny bars here and there, but overall just a pretty basic and mediocre song that just does the bare minimum to not be bad. You'll like it. Letter Home. This does for all the shine what all of the lights interlude does for all of the lights. Room smelling like egg switches. Candler Road. This dude somehow worked in the word hieroglyphics into his verse. Girls everywhere. You See Me. This is on the same level as those high school SoundCloud rappers that promise they're the next ones up. I, I'm not being too serious, but neither is this song. Every black, you're not black is a white, you're that power. The song part is kind of catchy and the narrative in the second half is good, but I know he's capable of incorporating a better sound when storytelling. You know Booty Shots Remix. The beat is actually kind of good and so is Gambino's rapping, but it gets pretty bad with the features on it. All y'all. Gambino played the Mushroom Gorge level from Mario Kart 7 and just started rapping over the music. Not going back. I like how on a lot of his earlier stuff, he's really aggressively rapping and yelling over a melodic violin or something. Dial up. I love this worst guy's instrumental, it's so dreamy. 
the night me and your mama met. Throw this on the sex playlist, am I right? Poke. Here Gambino gets his brother to hop on as a feature, which is cool because he's also the guy who sings the Paperboy theme from Atlanta. Dream slash Southern Hospitality slash Parnadem. I think uh, Southern Hospitality is the best one. 2419. This song is just like a lullaby that puts me to sleep. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's not really a great thing either. Stand tall. I know putting stand tall this low on the list is like a take hotter than the girl that I sit next to in my calculus 2 class, but I think this drags on for longer than it needs to. And I'm not also a huge fan of the synths and auto tune used in the second half of it, being honest. It just doesn't really add much to the whole overall listening experience. I'm sorry. Like, I do admire and like this song, but I don't love it. They don't know what Zombies. It's so impressive how well Glover incorporated a completely new sound on this album. Let's, let's skip this song, am I right? Oh my. I just listened back to that and that was the most cringe thing. I, I, I completely improvised that line. I didn't have a script for that song because I didn't really know what to say about it, but um, I like it. Yeah. No exit. This song would be a fever dream if I was tripping on psychedelics listening to this. I'd be horrified. Shadows. I like his singing on the track, but I really like the trippy ending even more. Terrified. This song is a direct follow-up to California, a song I haven't mentioned yet, about his fear of falling in love with the woman introduced in that song. Man up, bruh! 4748. I think Gambino's curation of instrumentation really shine on this folksy track. No small talk. The chorus is a little too catchy, I won't lie. Retro, rough. A very simple yet bouncy track. Zealots of Stockholm, Free Information. This is probably one of his weirdest songs ever, but I like it. Death by Numbers. This is one of my favorite interludes ever. Something about its aura. I, I don't even know how to describe it. I love it so much, but I couldn't put it any higher because as much as I wish I it was, it's not a full song. It feels like driving past Los Angeles lights like really fast at night. And yes, I would rather listen to this 40 second track over every previous song mentioned in the video so far. Sue me. Outside. The choir goes crazy. 1910, the year China finally made slavery illegal. That's right, look it up. But, uh, the song is good. Riot. Fittingly feels like a celebration. Lights turned on. A very strong song from his EP days back in 2011. Have some love. Go pause this video right now and text someone you love them. Boogeyman. Guys, this is Troy from Community. Earth, the oldest computer, the last night. This is a half pop song, half retro, techno, hyper electro song. Move that dope slash Nextel chirp slash let your hair blow. I like all three sections of the song, but the first part, Move That Dope, legitimately blew me away when I first heard it. I was so taken aback at how good his rapping and flow was on that fire beat. Yeah. The Palisades. A really simple song, but it works so well. Great vocals and a catchy, happy feeling instrumental. Time. A very existential and kind of scary track, but I love how well Ariana Grande's feature works on it. Kids. I really didn't like this song at first, but the more time passed, the more I'd catch myself singing along to it and then realized, oh snap, I like this song. Pop Thieves Make It Feel Good. One of the strongest highlights on Kawhi. All the Shine. The beginning of the song gives me Gorilla's Demon Days vibes, but the rest of the song is kind of beautiful. Firefly. I used to listen to this song swinging from building to building while playing Spider-Man on the PS4. Backpackers. I love the absolute rage in this song. Sober. I feel like this song would be really easy to learn on the piano. California. This was my beach song throughout the entirety of last summer. I get why some people are thrown off by his weird voice inflections and auto-tune vocals, but I don't know, I like it. Algorithm. I don't know why this and Time were the only songs in the album to get actual titles, but I like it. 4228, or it feels like summer. 
I love the animated music video for this song. I used to watch it over and over again when it came out, pointing out as many artists as I can recognize. Asian girls here, minority. Freaks and Geeks. I consider this to be his first good song because this EP came out a bit before Camp did. Heartbeat. This song goes so hard. Summertime Magic. Yeah, I know, I know, hot take. I think Summertime Magic is better than Feels Like Summer. The catchy chorus, the really fitting atmosphere, I just love it. Sunrise. Personally, one of the strongest highlights on camp for me. 5349. I know a lot of people don't love this album, but oddly enough, 31520 is the record that makes me wish he released more music. This is genius. World Star. A very energetic and braggadocious track. If you're wondering why the song switches up into a saxophone solo, it's because the boy walks by a jazz place in the screenplay. <laughs> Crawl. I love this hard-hitting opener. Gambino really isn't messing around and incorporates all these vocals from the melodic Kai to the aggressive yelling from Mystical. This is also the beginning of the narrative where the boy and his friends all hang out, smoke together, and invite a girl to a party where they're throwing later. Telegraph Ave. Oakland by Lloyd. I love that you can hear Gambino singing along to this song in it of itself because in this story he's listening to the song on the radio while driving the whip. It's so cool. What you say, what you do. 3005. Besides some cheesy one-liners here and there, I love the lyrics in this song and the majority of others off this album. 3531. So far, every single person I've played this song to has loved it. Well, I, I mean, I don't go around playing this song for people left and right, but sharing this song with my three friends and my mom is good enough for me. 3222. This is arguably many fans' least favorite song by him, and I can understand where you're coming from and why, but I cannot disagree more. Personally, I love this song. I don't pay attention to what he's saying because he's not really saying anything, but I treasure the noise the whole thing produces. It just gets me so hype. The Worst Guys. After a decade, I still never figured out what all she needed was. Yeah, you got some silverware, but really, are you eating no? Sweatpants. This song takes me back to this one time when Super Mario Odyssey came out and my family and I went on a cruise ship for a number of days. I was obsessed with this song. Asian dude, I stole his girl and now he got that Bonfire. Such an iconic song in his catalog. I know every single word by heart and I wouldn't be surprised if you do too. It's great. Redbone. It still amazes me how these are his natural vocals. This dude is so talented. Life, the biggest troll, Andrew Arnheimer. Storytelling. Baby Boy, one of the best melodies in his career. If you couldn't already tell by the title, the song is inspired by the recent birth of his son and delves into the excitement but also worries he has of being a father for the first time. I love it. This is America. When this song first came out, I was completely obsessed with it, and honestly still am. It's political and social commentary on how flawed the country of America really is as a whole, talking about the black experience and how huge problems in society are completely disregarded sometimes. The genius behind the music video is incredible too. Aside from the deadly nature of chaos happening in the background while Glover and the kids are just dancing, ignoring everything, there were so many little new things that you can point out after watching it over and over again. Like how the corpse of the guitar player is being messily dragged away on the ground, whereas the gun that shot him is carefully taken away on a red velvet hand or how there are two chickens in the background, one white, one brown, turning away from each other, a kid throwing away all his money, this guy gay mens himself, how these guys are recording on their phones and not doing anything, wearing masks, saying nothing, Glover doing Jim Crow poses and exaggerated facial expressions depicting old and demeaning African American caricatures, SZA? I think this song is a masterpiece, and I'm glad it got its flowers from everyone who appreciates good art like this, but it's not yet his best. Pink Toes. I love how colorful this song feels. It feels exactly like how the album cover looks. I do admit I'm not crazy about Gene Aiko's performance, but it's not enough to make me dislike the song. It's my personal favorite off because of the internet. Made a miss of my like me. Number 2, 1238. This is the type of music I would love to hear more of from Gambino. I can't get enough of this song. It basically chronicles a trip he has with a girl, and I could argue it's his best storytelling in his music career. I can understand why some people label this song as really boring, but I just find it so chill. Like, it's so nice to just walk to class to, or drive to. I love the 21 feature and just everything about it. It's a perfect song, and I'd be proud to have this one under my belt. Okay, and now for what I believe to be both my favorite and his best song ever. You probably already know what it is. It's not really much of a surprising pick, but it is... Me and Your Mama. 
This song is just something else. This song is so ethereal. I don't even know what other word I could use to describe something this magnificent to this degree could be. If you told me that you think this is one of the greatest songs ever of all time, I, I wouldn't even be in the least bit shocked. This track is amazing, and what I believe to be Childish Gambino's magnum opus, or in other words, his best song. Hey, thanks for making it to the end of the video. But tell me, what's your favorite Childish Gambino song? Do you agree with me or nah? Let me know in the comments, I love reading them. But anyways, that's about it for me. I'll see you on the next video. See ya.